welcome and good evening today uh, we are having a very unique program uh, in ama when we uh, talk about a person gandhi and in ahmedabad everybody will be uh, thrilled to hear about him to know about him and today we are going to know something about him from a person who is not from ahmedabad and not from india so i think uh, uh, the uh, uh, we say that uh, uh, he is a peace activist but i would say that he is uh, experimenting with truth and uh, uh, mr james uh, is here and uh, we must give him a big round of applause and uh, i will uh, welcome him with a bouquet of flower on behalf of ama and all of us here in fact uh, uh, we have uh, dr anamik shah with us he is uh, the vice chancellor of gujarat vidyapit and uh, today uh, since uh, the subject is very apt for him i am not going to speak anything he is going to uh, introduce us uh, uh, and then we will go further but definitely uh, uh, i'll be very grateful uh, because he has uh, organized this and uh, we also would like to welcome him uh, with a bouquet of flower we also have with us uh, dr uh, tridip shurad he is uh, going to be the moderator today and uh, right from now on to the end he is going to uh, handle this program uh, so before he takes it over i would like to welcome him also with a bouquet of flower i think uh, uh, straight away we begin and we uh, i invite uh, uh, tridip bhai to or uh, anamik sir you can start yeah thank you before we um, begin the proceedings can i request vadra ben to come and do an invocation and then uh, anamik uh, professor anamik shah will introduce jim uh, sonal will speak about the book Jim will respond to that, and then we will start the dialogue. That's how it's going to be. Uh, so I'm not going to intervene. That it should be on autopilot. You and you and you and. नारायण भाई नु एक गांधी नो जीवन मंत्र गांधी कथा माते लखायलू एक गीत गुजराती मा सत्य एक चिंतन सत्य नी आराधना इना थी हूं शुरू करू छु सत्य एक चिंतन सत्य नी आराधना सत्यनुज पूजन सत्यनीज साधना सत्य एक चिंतन सत्य मारो ध्रुव तारो सत्य चिंध मारग मारो सत्य मारो ध्रुव तारो सत्य चिंध मारग मारो सत्य नीज टूके टूके 
करूं हूं आरोहण सत्य एक चिंतन सत्य नो जथाओ जय भले मारो था तो क्षय सत्य नो जथाओ जय भले मारो था तो क्षय अल्पात्मा ने मापवाने सत्य गज खूटे ना सत्य एक चिंतन सत्य मारी भागीरथी सत्य मारी छे कालिंदी सत्य मारी भागीरथी सत्य मारी छे कालिंदी सत्य सरस्वती नीरे करूं हूं निमाजना सत्य एक चिंतन सत्य नी आराधना सत्य एक चिंतन मोहन भाई ने शुभ मंगल नी इच्छा छे इतने बेलिटी गए लो शुभ मंगल हो शुभ मंगल हो शुभ मंगल 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 हो नभ मंगल धरती मंगल हो धरती का कण कण मंगल हो गति मंगल हो स्थिति मंगल हो जीवन का क्षण क्षण मंगल हो मति मंगल हो प्रीति मंगल हो मानव की हर कृति मंगल हो शुभ मंगल हो शुभ मंगल हो शुभ मंगल 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 Welcome all, especially today's speaker, uh, James Douglas, AMA President, Sonal Ben, and today's uh, moderator and prominent writer, uh, Tradeep Bhai. Uh, it's a privilege for me to introduce a person, rather a personality and a couple. Today, only James Douglas is with us, but Jim is not with us. But both are working for several decades, especially in the peace movement as a activist, as a Gandhian activist, and his genesis of encountering Gandhi date backs not in several decades, only few decades, but he was earlier working as a peace researcher, as I understand. Uh, in 1975, a center started, particularly in New, in New York, which was known as 
ग्राउंड हीरो सेंटर फॉर नॉन वायलेंट एक्शन एंड वर्ल्ड वाइड जेम्स इज नोन फॉर दैट फॉर इट्स सेंटर एंड इट्स एक्टिविटी द एक्टिविटी कम्स अराउंड गांधीन थिंकिंग गांधीन फिलोसॉफी विथ पीस एंड नॉन वायलेंस एंड विथ स्ट्रॉन्ग रेजिस्टेंस टू दी फोर्स इज ऑफ मास डिस्ट्रक्शन एंड इवन अगेंस्ट दी पर्सनल वेपन्स दी वेरी वेल नोन इंसिडेंस इन इज लाइफ वॉज ए ट्रेन नोन एज वाइट ट्रेन विच वॉज गोइंग विथ मोर देन टू थाउजेंड न्यूक्लियर मिसाइल्स इंटू ए सबमरीन नोन एज ट्राइडंट एंड द मूमेंट स्टार्टेड फॉर पीस दैट दीज वेपन्स विच आर टू थाउजेंड टाइम्स मोर देन द नंबर देन दी नागो नागा साके एंड हिरोशिमा will lead to the entire universe nowhere and therefore at least someone a handful people should resist it in a method which is already developed by mahatma gandhi so this was his uh, uh, past work uh, and uh, again the resistance with love which is the principle of mahatma gandhi so the army cantonments and area where all these activities are going on uh, james and his group has started growing vegetables and showing that this is the better alternate to utilize the land and that was his uh, uh, wonderful action against them having said he is a gandhian activist and uh, it will be very odd that he has not gone in go, gone in jail so for several of his activities he has gone in jail for 6 months and again coming back he has started his work which is against which is related to peace movement he has he has been authoring number of books and what i have observed that the title of your all books are very very symbolic the first in my list is the non violent cross we not christian cross but non violent cross is new to us and uh, there i remember the italian humorist who has written don camillo and peppino about uh, the struggle between communist and church uh, the second book resistance and contemplation third is lightning east to west then non violent coming of god god comes but currently god comes with the violence so he has very thoughtfully written that non violent coming of god uh, john f kennedy and the unspeakable gandhi and the unspeakable his final experiment with truth many peace marches he was involved in including iraq and for the entire life he has tried for freedom democracy poor and marginalized people truth and non violence he is running in birmingham a organization which is uh, a service organization and uh, he has got several awards both jim and uh, douglas both says that our life mission 
is to find out truth by non-violent method and ways and means. And therefore, we stood against all type of racism. We stood against all type of consumerization because it is also a type of violence and it is the market forces which are uh, giving us secondary tertiary violence, gender discrimination. These are all roads to violence and we are against it both individually and politically. So this is uh, the, uh, the statement of the couple who are very devoted. His book, Unspeakable Truth, on which we are going to hear, so I am not going to speak on that, but the younger generation and researchers were in the field of research, either in history or in social science or in literature, they have to see that how meticulously the entire work of his each and every book is done. I think that for written, writing a small book, it's not very thick volume book, but only 200 pages book, he must have seen 800, more than 800 documents and especially several volumes, volumes of Kapoor Commission, which was reinvestigate the assassination and uh, other uh, things involved of Mahatma Gandhi. He has also gone through the entire trial volumes, which are eight volumes, several hundred and thousand pages to write, to write this book in the right perspective. And therefore, we are very happy that when the days of post-truth is coming before us, we have a person who stood behind the truth and uh, with his deterrent uh, uh, commitment for the truth and history. So he has given several pages of history. Some of his findings we may not understand or we may not like or we may not agree also, but ultimately truth remains truth, whether you like it or not. You cannot alter the truth. And therefore, with this uh, introduction, uh, I'll take my place so that the further proceeding can be started. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, I would like to speak in Gujarati because I'm more comfortable in Gujarati, if you don't mind. Yeah. So, je pustak vishe charcha thavani chhe, ena vishe ek payo bandhvano prayatna mare karvano chhe. So, siddhi hum e topic par au chhu. Ke Gandhi and the unspeakable, his final experiment of truth. Eno Gujarati Anuvad Pan Pragat Thayo Gai Kale. To Enu Je Thim Chhe, E Gandhi Hatya Ni Aspas Fare Chhe. Gandhi Hatya Ne Lagti Je Badi Vigato Chhe, Ema Jata Pella Lekha Ke थोड़ी बात थोड़ा एम्फेसाइज ए वस्तु पर करी हुई है कि गांधीजी वो कहता कि जब हिंसा नहीं तालिम लेना रे मारवानी कला शिक्षित पड़े तेम अहिंसा नहीं तालिम जेले इन्हें मारवानी कला शिक्षित पड़े अने गांधीजी ये इम्ने जिंदगी ना अठ्यावीस माह वर्ष थी इतनी युवान वही थी आ कला शिक्षणों अभ्यास 
ए रीते शुरू करेलो कि एम पर पहले जीवलेण हूमलो दक्षिण आफ्रिका में जे थोड़े एमनी अठयास में वर्ष की उम्र थे एनी पेला जे पीटर मेरिस्बर्ग की घटना बनी त वक्त तो गांधी जी मत चौवीस वर्ष ए हूमलो एम जीव पर ना एम आत्मा पर तो हो वक्खते एमने नक्की करेलू कि मारे लड़वु को लड़वु जेने एने फेंकी दीधो पे अन्याय जे मानसिकता ए मणस ने फेंकी दे प्रेरती थी ए मानसिकता सा लड़व तो वक्त उम्र थी जो यात्रा शुरू थी मरवा कला शीखी ले त्यार पी दक्षिण आफ्रिका में त्यार पी भारत में एम पर घा बदा हूमलाओ थ पांच थी वारे हूमला आ सेम आज ग्रुपे करेला सावरकर प्रेरित जे गोडसे आपटे वगैरह की टोड़ी थी ए लोग करेला पांच थी वारे हूमला एट गांधी जी एम हत्याराओं ने ओखता था एमने ए वस्तु अंदाज के मारू मार अंत आ रीते जाट एम तैयारी पी एम एम मृत्यु की आगली रात्र कहेलू पर खरु कि जो हूँ कोई मैंने गोड़ी मारे अने जो हूँ एने सामी छाती झीलू अने हत्यारा ने क्षमा करूँ हत्यारा प्रत्येना मार मन में क्षमा भाव साथ भगवान नाम ले तो ले तो जो हूँ मरु तो ज हूँ महात्मा कहवाने लायक छू तो सत्य अंतिम प्रयोग जे पोते गोड़ी खाई ने करो गांधी जीए सफलता थी एम पक्षे तो आखी सफलता सफलता एमन मृत्यु तो जी रीते विनुबाए कहू कि जी रीते एम जहामानवन थव जो है ए रीते जम मृत्यु आग पाचड़ जे संजोगों काम करता था जे मणसों काम करता था जे परिबड़ों देखाता था जे परिबड़ों नौता देखाता ए बधा ने बहुज डिटेल में बात जीम भाई खूब संशोधन साथ खूब जेने कही है कि चौकसाई साथ करी है एट बढ़ा रेफरन्स एम एकप वस्तु आकाश में लीधेली नहीं विचार लीधेली नहीं दरेके दरेक एक स्टेटमेंट एमन एना रेफरन्स वगरन है नहीं भार दे कि आपने तो घटना जो देखाई थी तो देखाई थी कि गोडसे गांधी जी ने गोड़ी मारी प्रार्थना सभा में गांधी जी रामन नाम लैने ढड़ी पड़ा त्र गोड़ी वगैया ते पी ए पकड़ो पी ए पर केस चालियों ने पी ए फांसी अपाई पखी घटना बनी तो यी जे अमुक अनस्पीकेबल्स जोड़ेला है कि हत्या टाड़ी शक होत हत्या थी एना पेला तीसमी जान्युआरी हत्या थी एना पेला दस दिवस पहला एक प्रार्थना सभा में बॉम्ब फोड़ो तेज दिवसे खरेखर तो गांधी जी हत्या प्लान हो समहाव ए प्लान अमल में नहीं मुकायो बॉम्ब फोड़ना मणस जे एक शरणार्थी युवान हो मदनलाल पहावा ए पकड़ाया एनु जयरे पोलसे बयान लीधु तेरे एने कहू के आखो प्लान एने कहो कि आ लोग एने साचा नाम की खबर नती कहू कि आटला लोग है लोग आ प्लान करता था और ये फरी आशे त्यार पी दस दिवस पची हत्या थी आ दस दिवस में जे थे कड़ीबद्ध आलेख पुस्तक में अपायेलो दिल्ली पोलिस मुंबईनी पोलिस नवी नवी स्वतंत्र भारत की नवी सरकार जे गांधी जी पट्ट शिष्य वड़े बने लीती दिल्ली में मोरारजी भाई था गृहप्रधान दिल्ली मुंबई में मुंबईनी पोलिस आ बदा मड़ी ने पगेरू शोधी शक एम था मदनलाल पास नाम नौता पर मदनलाल पास जो वर्णन था एना पर सावरकर सुधी जव कि एम शिष्य सुधी जव अघरू नौत तो पी एम केम नहीं थू बिकॉज ऑफ द अनस्पीकेबल्स एवं बड़ों एवं फोर्सिस के जे आपने एक बहु दुखद वस्तु रियलाइजेशन करे कि गांधी की हत्या थी एजलू साचू है 
એટલું જ સાચું એ પણ છે કે ગાંધીની હત્યા થવા દેવામાં આવી એ નું જે આલેખન છે મેં જ ટ્રાન્સલેશન કર્યું છે એટલે મને એની પૂરી ખબર છે કે એ આલેખન એટલું બધું આપણને અંદરથી તકલીફ આપે કે આ આપણે કઈ જાતના બળો હતા અને ગાંધીજી જેવાને જેને બ્રિટિશ શાસનની સામે લડાઈ કરી એકવીસ વર્ષ સુધી દક્ષિણ આફ્રિકામાં અને તેત્રીસ વર્ષ સુધી ભારતમાં એ લોકોએ એને માર્યા નથી પણ સ્વતંત્ર થયા પછી આપણે એને માર્યા છે અને એટલું ઓછું હોય એમ ત્યાર પછી આજ સુધી એમના વિચારોની હત્યા એક કે બીજા પ્રકારે રોજે રોજ ચાલે છે આપણે પોતે કરતા હોઈએ તો પણ થાય છે અથવા આપણે થવા દેતા હોઈએ તો પણ થાય છે અને આજે પણ કેટલા બધા અનસ્પીકેબલ ફોર્સીસ છે જેના વચ્ચે આપણે જીવી રહ્યા છીએ એટલે લેખકની સાચી સિદ્ધિ મને એ પણ લાગે કે કડીબદ્ધ આલેખ આખી વસ્તુનો આપ્યા પછી એ વાચકને એ આખી ઘટનાની ઉપર લઈ જાય છે કે અનસ્પીકેબલ્સ ફક્ત ગાંધીજીની હત્યા સાથે જોડાયેલા નથી અનસ્પીકેબલ ફોર્સીસ હરેક સમયમાં હતા આજે પણ છે અને એની વચ્ચે આપણે કઈ રીતે કામ કરીએ છીએ આપણે એને કઈ રીતે રિએક્ટ કરીએ છીએ એના પર આપણા વર્તમાનનો ભવિષ્યનો બધાનો આધાર છે તો મને લાગે છે કે આટલી ભૂમિકા પૂરતી છે અને હવે જીમભાઈ સાથે આપણે વાતો કરીશું થેન્ક યુ Friends, yesterday at the <coughs> Gujarat Vidya Peet, I, I tried to say what it means to be a disciple of Gandhi and Satyagraha on the one hand <coughs> and what it means to be <coughs> a disciple of Savarkar and Hindutva on the other. The sharply contrasting stories of Gandhi and Savarkar seen side by side are important because the rulers of India right now honor and follow Savarkar who was the controlling mastermind of Gandhi's assassination. This evening I want to speak about an important addition that Savarkar made to the orders he gave to his two disciples, Nathuram Godse and Narayan Apte, to go kill Gandhiji. Savarkar also wanted Godse and Apte to kill, if possible, Jawaharlal Nehru and Shahid Surawardi. Their co-conspirator Dingabar Badge testified that on January the 14th, 1948, after Godse and Apte had met with Savarkar in his Bombay home, Apte then said to Badge, Savarkar decided that Gandhiji Yavaharlal 
Nehru and Surawardi should be finished. And Savarkar entrusted the work to us. Who was the Surawardi who Savarkar said should be finished, along with Gandhiji and Prime Minister Nehru? And why did Savarkar want to have Sudrawardi killed too? Shahid Sudrawardi was the Muslim League's chief minister of Bengal in 1946-47. Sudrawardi was notorious among Hindus for his government's complicity in the great Calcutta killing of August 1946, when 4,000 people were killed and 11,000 injured in four terrible days of Muslim League direct action and Hindu retaliation. In the minds of Hindus, Shahid Surawardi was their arch enemy. He was identified as the man most responsible for the great Calcutta killing. Yet Gandhi insisted on the responsibility and the redemption of both sides. He excluded no one. He reached out to Surawardi, challenging but not condemning him. In their correspondence, Gandhi reminded Surawardi that he had once known him as a much younger man when Shahid was an aspiring satyagrahi struggling with a spinning wheel. On August 11, 1947, four days before Britain would grant India and Pakistan independence, Gandhi visited Calcutta. As Muslims fled India for Pakistan, Calcutta's remaining Muslims suffered Hindu retaliation for the previous year's great Calcutta killing. Surawardi, whose term as chief minister was expiring, now pleaded with Gandhi to remain in Calcutta. Would he prolong his stay until real peace could be restored? Gandhi said, I will remain if you and I are prepared to live together. We shall have to work as long as every Hindu and Muslim in Calcutta does not safely return to the place where he was before. We shall continue in our effort until our last breath. Surawardi knew Gandhi was serious. He was being invited into a nonviolent fire. The consequences of his saying yes would be life changing. Gandhi told him the old Surawardi will have to die. The next day, Shahid Surawardi did say yes. On August the 13th, Gandhi and Surawardi moved together into an old abandoned Muslim mansion in the Calcutta slum of Beliagata. That first night, a crowd of angry young Hindu men broke doors and windows, pushed through the house, and surrounded Gandhi. They said they didn't want any of his sermons on Ahimsa. They told him, get out. Gandhi engaged them in dialogue. He asked, how can I, who am a Hindu by birth, a Hindu by creed, and a Hindu of Hindus in my way of living, be an enemy of Hindus? The next day, the young men returned for a long talk 
with Gandhi as Surawardi sat beside him. When the youth left, they promised to win over their friends for reconciliation with Muslims. Gandhi had chosen the perfect companion for his Calcutta experiment with truth, the Hindu symbol of evil. Shahid Surawardi was at the heart of Calcutta consciousness. As Gandhian scholar Dennis Dalton put it, no individual could have better disarmed Muslim suspicion and also attracted the hostilities of the Hindus, drawing them into the experiment where they could be neutralized nonviolently. On August 14, the eve of India's and Pakistan's independence, over 10,000 people jammed the grounds for Gandhi's prayer meeting. Where is Surawardi? they shouted. Gandhi said that to avoid provoking them, Surawardi had stayed in the house, but that he would be at the next day's prayer meeting. After Gandhi went inside, the people stoned the house, calling for Surawardi. Gandhi threw open a shutter. He quieted the crowd brought Surawardi to the window and placed his hand on his friend's shoulder. And as Surawardi tried to speak, a voice in the crowd demanded, are you not responsible for the great Calcutta killing? Surawardi said, yes, we all are. Will you answer my question, please? Yes, it was my responsibility. Surawardi's confession was a moment of grace. Gandhi said later, it was a turning point. It had a cleansing effect. I could sense it. On August the 15th, Independence Day, crowds of Hindus and Muslims processed together through the streets of Calcutta. In their mutual celebration, they acted as if they had forgotten their battles. Gandhi doubted if they had, as he waited for the bubble to burst, what India was calling the miracle of Calcutta lasted for two and one half weeks. On the night of August 31, Calcutta's peace ended where it had begun in Gandhi's presence. A riotous crowd broke into the Beliagata house, awakening Gandhi. Furious Hindus had carried in a bandaged man they claimed was the victim of Muslim violence. They wanted to put their hands on Surawardi, who happened to be away, to avenge their fellow Hindu. Gandhi got up from his sleeping mat. Restrained by anxious co-workers, he tried to walk into the angry crowd as it demanded revenge on Surawardi. Gandhi cried out, what is all this? Kill me. Kill me, I say. Why don't you kill me? They almost did. Someone swung a lathi stick at him. It barely missed his head, smashing against the wall. A brick aimed at him struck and hurt a friend. 
Gandhi said finally to the crowd, my God asks me, where do you stand? I am deeply pained. Is this the reality of the peace that was established on August 15th? The next day, just outside the house, murder occurred. Two Muslim men were killed while being transported in the back of a truck to a safer locality. Hand grenades were thrown on them from a nearby roof. Gandhi went out and prayed by the bodies. He was shaken by the spreading violence in the city. By nightfall, 50 had been killed and more than 300 injured. Gandhi toured the devastated areas. He began to fast that night, announcing it to the press. He said, it will be do or die. Either there will be peace or I shall be dead. On the first day of the fast, Calcutta continued to riot. Two satyagrahis who tried to subdue the violence were killed. Gandhi celebrated their lives and continued his fast. By the second and third days, the people were feeling Gandhi's pain. Peaceful processions crossed the city. On the fourth day, leaders of the killing groups came to Gandhi. They surrendered weapons, beseeching him to end his fast. They would gladly undergo any penalty Gandhi would give them. Gandhi said, my penalty for you is that you should go immediately among the Muslims and assure them full protection. The moment I am convinced that real change of heart has taken place, I will give up the fast. On that night of September 4, Sudawardi brought in a delegation representing all the communities of Calcutta. Gandhi told them he would end the fast only if they were willing to give their lives to prevent a return to violence. The leaders retired to the next room. In half an hour, they came back having signed a pledge that promised Gandhi, now that peace and quiet have been restored in Calcutta once again, we shall never allow communal strife in the city and shall strive unto death to prevent it. Gandhi decided Calcutta's turn toward peace was real. Surawardi handed him a glass of one ounce of sweet lemon juice and he broke his fast. Two days later at the prayer meeting, Surawardi announced he would be joining Gandhi on his next mission of peace. It would turn out to be Delhi. He said, I have put myself unreservedly under Mahatmaji's orders, therefore I will carry out his biddings. Shaheed Surawardi would work with Gandhiji for the five months left until his assassination. That fall, Surawardi shuttled between India and Pakistan, acting as Gandhi's intermediary in his appeals to Muhammad Ali Jinnah for mutual cooperation. In the years following Gandhi's assassination, Shaheed Surawardi would become a leader of pro-democracy movements in Pakistan. In 1956, as the National Assembly's opposition leader, he helped create the Constitution of Pakistan. 
Surawardi then became Pakistan's prime minister from September 1956 to October 1957. After he left office, Pakistan's next government suspended the constitution and declared martial law. In 1958, Surawardi refused to support Ayub Khan's dictatorship. In 1959, the government banned him from politics. And in 1962, as he continued to voice his dissent, he was charged with anti-state activities. He was imprisoned in solitary confinement for six months. Upon his release in August 1962, Surawardi courageously launched a movement in resistance to Ayub Khan's military dictatorship. His goal was to restore the 1956 constitution and a parliamentary democracy. While the pro-democracy movement was growing in Pakistan, its leader, Shahid Surawardi, died suddenly on December 5, 1963, in a hotel room in Beirut, Lebanon. He expired under what were described as unusually mysterious circumstances, possibly poisoned or gassed in his bedroom. Soon after he had received threats on his life, if he should try to return to Pakistan. The threats had come from Pakistan's foreign minister and its central intelligence department. Shahid Surawardi risked his life with Gandhi to save Calcutta from another massacre like the one he himself had been responsible for the year before. He died trying to save democracy in Pakistan a decade and a half later. Gandhi would have been proud of the man he called my son. On his way to that luminous event, 15 years earlier, on January the 20th, 1948, Surawardi became, with his spiritual father Gandhi, a target for assassination in Delhi. Savarkar a man who hid behind his assassins had a genius for manipulating younger disciples into going to their deaths on his behalf. As a gifted writer who put his words into the mouths of his more courageous disciples, he also had the capacity to propagandize murderous events in opposite directions from the truth. Following Gandhiji's physical shooting by Nathuram Godse, Gandhi's character and history have been attacked and twisted out of recognition over and over again by Savarkar's Hindutva disciples. However, Savarkar's targeting of Shahid Surawardi along with Gandhi and Nehru, shows his fear of Gandhi's power through Satyagraha. Even after surrendering to British power in prison and helping the British divide India by his Hindutva counterpart to Jinnah's Muslim state vision, Savarkar still knew he did not have the power to match Gandhi's in an open struggle for the future of India. To prevail 
against Gandhi, Savarkar tried killing his body first through the hands of his assassins, then by lying endlessly through his disciples about who Gandhi was and why he supposedly had to be killed. Savarkar's targeting of Shahid Surawardi, a witness to the ability of Gandhi's experiments with truth in Calcutta to transform a conflict and reconcile enemies, showed how much Savarkar feared Gandhi and his unlikely disciple. The world-changing power of Satyagraha on the moral arc of the universe is just waiting today for more such experiments with truth by the satyagrahi of tomorrow. The story of Shahid Surawardi is a sign of the satyagraha miracles still to come in our crucially hopeful time of nonviolence or non-existence. Yeah, um, James, before we open up, uh, um, needed to respond to about three or four large issues that you raise. And, and then uh, one could um, think of it. Um, I was very struck by two words that you used, um, um, not the word unspeakable, to which I will come later, but the idea of it being a luminous evening, that that evening was filled with light as Gandhi walked to his death, um, and the idea of it being filled with light, as also the idea of a moral arc which seems to suggest, and I think that's really where uh, one would want to engage with you, about the, not only about the act of killing and the act of dying, but what is the meaning of that death? Uh, because what we make of the meaning of that death uh, suggests the parts that we choose as societies, as cultures, uh, what we make of death and assassinations, uh, of, of, um, of trials, um, and the two two trials that you did not mention, uh, but it's there in your earlier work about the nonviolent cross, is of course the trial of Socrates, and uh, strangely a defamation trial against a man called Jesus Christ. Um, it, was, uh, it was a blasphemy trial, uh, um, which then leads to a certain kind of moral compass that which becomes available to us. So that's one set of questions about the meaning of death and how does society really create a set of meanings around an act of death. That's one. Second is the idea of the unspeakable itself. Um, is, it, is it something that um, we do not speak of because we do not have the words for it, or we do not speak of because we think that that idea does not have a hearing space? So is, it, is the unspeakable the unhearable? is the unspeakable, the unheard, structurally unheard, because certain ideas do not have a space in every society. Every society, at every point in time, has a space for certain ideas, and it pushes certain ideas to its margins. And, 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 and so is the unspeakable really something that we do not wish to hear about? That's the second set of questions that I want your reflections on. The third set of questions is on the act of bearing witness. 
And as, as somebody um, who's trained in theology and philosophy, and you know, sorry, I mean, um, you know, we have this idea that an activist is generally illiterate. Uh, we forget that an activist actually is somebody who's a philosopher. And your training is in, 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 in uh, theology and philosophy, and, and the act of bearing witness is important. I know, um, and I think this audience also would know, that you were the only, among the only two people who bore witness, witness to the trial of Martin Luther King. Uh, apart from the judge and the jury and the, and, 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 and the prosecution which had to be there, there were only other two people who do this as an act of witnessing, not only to witness uh, what, uh, what the proceedings are, but also witness the unfolding of truth. Strangely, among the dozens or millions of disciples that Gandhi had, or that we claim that he had, not one person, not one person bears witness to Gandhi's trial. It's, it's a very strange thing uh, to, to, to think about is this, this, what is this apathy that we have to not bearing witness? And be, because we know that the act of bearing witness is very important. Um, you know, Hannah Arendt would do something similar that you did in Jerusalem at Eichmann's trial. Sit through the entire trial and do philosophical reflections as to what is the nature of truth and untruth which unfolds. For Gandhi, we don't do that. Um, and it's, it's, I, I, it's always struck me as something very strange, um, the kind of apathy that we had to the act of bearing witness. That's the, and the last question, and, and I don't want to preempt your conversation in Delhi with Ashish, uh, but I know where it's going to go. Uh, and I think it's, it's good that we start it here. Um, Ashish, not very, um, and, and I'm not in a playful way, but in a very serious psychoanalytical way, uh, did say Gandhi co-authored his assassination. He participated in the act of being assassinated. Um, and and it, it has immense lessons uh, uh, for the nature of the experiment, but as also the nature of how does one look at death? How does one will a death in a particular way? Uh, uh, Ashish took it in the psychoanalytical way, but you could also take it in the moral way. That there is a certain moral willfulness to a violent death, uh, which, which then allows you to give an example of, or the final example if it's required, of nonviolence. So these were the four or five uh, broad things that I wanted you to reflect uh, on, and then we could move on to the, uh, uh, to the questions uh, that the people might have. <laughs> um, <clears throat> which one shall I write the first book about? <laughs> On the last question? Uh, well, different parts of the last question. Um, um, how did Gandhi participate in his own assassination. Um, did you use the term participate? I, I didn't quite. Co-authored. Co-authored it. Uh, in, in a sense, perhaps, um, there are sp all kinds of specific questions around that very important question and um, about the security, about his willingness to, his willingness one, the, one, the one thing that he, he was very, very clear on, no body searches, he was very clear on that, but he did not, he did not bar anything else. He was very clear. He said that uh, Patel and Nehru, they have responsibilities. I can't tell them what to do. I don't think that it's going to, it's, it's, it's up to God, not how many people there, but that was not, um, you know, he didn't prevent any of that. And um, maybe, maybe just say one thing, and then I, I, I think everybody should be participating. Um, I don't want to go the, the, <laughs> talking about, these are big questions, 
and maybe we could speak a little bit afterwards, but I, I, there are too many books here. Uh, you have too much, too much for me. <laughs> so, but the last one is perhaps the most important. Did he co-author his assassination? Well, um, I, I have read very carefully um, um, Ashish, his, his great article, it's a very great article. Um, maybe put it this way, um, one of the things that Gandhiji said numerous times during the last few days, um, I want to go to Pakistan. So um, I'm going to kill myself and go to Pakistan? I don't think so. He had things he wanted to do as a continuation of his uh, experiments with truth. He can experiment with the truth of his death for another year and year and year and year and year, but the situation was preventing that. So uh, I don't think he, he wanted to die for in, the, in, the sen in that sense. No, I didn't, I didn't expect you to, 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 to answer all of those. Uh, we're going to take questions from the floor. Uh, if you've got sheets and if you want to write on them, please do so. If you want to speak, uh, or, or you could write in any language, and I'll try and translate it for, uh, 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 for, for James and James's response, if necessary. James, the first question is uh, from uh, Mahadev Vidrohi. Uh, um, and and he, he's pointing out to the fact that um, the Hindu Mahasabha, as you spoke of, uh, it continues to be a very powerful political organization. Uh, continues to, to uh, which, which I didn't the Hindu Mahasabha uh, continues to be a powerful political organization yes. Yes. Uh, and has much greater legitimacy today than it probably had in Gandhi's time. Um, and, and there are attempts to celebrate Gandhi's assassin, um, creating uh, shrines to him attempts to put up his statues, uh, uh, attempts to name localities after him. So the question really is, uh, do you think they're becoming more powerful, or are the killers There's, alive today? Are there too many echoes? Uh, uh, I can't quite get all the words. Do I think there's a lot of echoes? Uh, do you think that Gandhi's killers are alive today? <coughs> that his what is alive today? Killers, killers are oh, alive killers. today. I understand, yeah. Uh, yes, I think his killers are alive today um, in, in a worse way than they were alive when they uh, shot him on uh, January 30, 1948. I think the second assassination of Gandhiji is worse than killing his body. I think that attacking and attacking and attacking and lying and lying and lying about who he was and what Satyagraha was and what he did is worse than going bang, bang, bang into his body. Yes, his killers are still alive today. That's a, I really appreciate that question. I think about it all the time, yeah. More alive. Um, there's a question um, about the veracity of the events or the veracity of the narration that you gave. Uh, historical veracity. Of course, of course, um, of course. Um, it says these are mere historic events. Uh, what is the veracity of, of what you said or, or, or of the events? Um, I mean, basically saying, where are your bloody footnotes? <coughs> um, everything I said tonight <coughs> is in here. And the most important part is not what's in the front, which ends <laughs> page 113, but what's in the back, 
maybe 50 more pages because um, I, if I gave the end notes tonight, it wouldn't work very well. Mm. Um, everything I said tonight is based on an end note. Yep. Everything I said tonight is based on an end note and is part of the story here. And if I were, to, if were, if I were to even to speak just about this, this story of Shahid Surawardi, um, it would go on uh, for hours and hours. There, he, he has an incredible story. And uh, the end notes, that is a great question. Where did you get all this? Where did it come from? It's all back here is where it came from. And some of what the stuff that, some of the parts that are in the back are more important than the parts in the front, but they didn't fit into the story. And the story has to move. I know today that unless you can tell everything in 10 seconds, everybody loses attention, or supposedly. So I, I'm not a really good storyteller, but I do the best I can, and I don't want anybody to stop, because Gandhiji didn't stop, and his killers didn't stop. So I, what I'm trying to do is I have to rewrite. I'm not a good writer. Confession. I have to rewrite everything hundreds of times. So that's the first part, but the up, up, back part is run, going to the Library of Congress and <coughs> um, speaking with Arun and Tushar Gandhi and finding out about the particular witness and so forth and so on. That is an excellent question. Where did this all come from? You say all these things. It's, uh, it may not be right, um, all I can do is try. Experiments with truth, we, we all try and we go more deeply into it and you say, no, good. That's what they said to Gandhiji and then we, we work with it. This, this is a beginning. And, and, and just to supplement that information, I mean, anybody who's interested and in looking at the original documents of the entire trial, including the first information report filed, um, all of those records are now available at the archives of the Sabarmati Ashram. Uh, um, an entire set is available for people to consult. So it's not, it's not, it's, I'm, I'm trying to say that it's not a f figment of your imagination that Gandhi was killed. Um, um, and then actually a trial did take place, and, and, and we but do I have... Think, I, th I think that, that it's very, very important, uh, uh, the Kapoor Commission, yeah. um, the Kapoor Commission, yeah. which, which uh, was already mentioned, and I, I, I learned very, very much from mm. the Kapoor Commission. Yeah. It's not like the Warren Commission. No, it's not. <laughs> and, you know, and I don't know, I mean, um, you know, last year, year before last, um, a very interesting case came up before the Supreme Court of India, uh, almost like the Ka Kennedy assassination, saying that there was a fourth bullet. Right? And since no autopsy was done, um, the real assassin who fired that fourth fatal bullet is still at large, or, or that we don't really know the nature of the conspiracy. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court didn't take it very seriously. I mean, they should have opened it up, and we would have had great fun all over again. Um, but um, no, but I think that's that's it, it's 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 interesting how these things come up 60 years, 70 years later, yeah. uh, in a completely different kind of a political culture. To say, uh, could we re-examine the possibility of these? not being the killers, but somebody else being yeah. a killer. And, and, and that would have been a very interesting thing. The Supreme Court, unfortunately, uh, shut it down. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a question uh, uh, on, on uh, sh what he called Shaheed Suravars. Uh, it, sh the word Shaheed is not in the sense of the martyrdom, right? It is Shaheed is the name that he has. So I think I've just clarified that on his behalf. Um, there is I, a I should clarify too. I've been trying to learn all day how to say that the, the word, the names of, of my main character. I'm yeah. not very good. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> Shaheed yeah. Surawardi. 
trying. Um, <coughs> there is, um, um, there is, um, th there is a, um, there is a poser to you, uh, saying Veer Savarkar, not just Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, but Veer Savarkar, yes. the brave one, uh, yeah. the courageous one, was a freedom fighter, uh -huh. um, and, and it is understandable why he was plotting assassination of a senior freedom fighter, Mahatma Gandhi. So the, there is, the question really is that it's a legitimate act of, it, 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 it is something that can be understood. Uh, uh, and and, and the, the answer of that should be obvious to you. He was, um, he was a person who I'm talking about Savarkar. He was a person who had a a very distinct experience <clears throat> that I have never had. I've been in jail a few times, but I have never remotely experienced I think, mm. maybe a little remotely, mm. what Savarkar experienced in the cellular jail in Port Blair in the Andaman Islands. And I think that um, that needs to be considered very, very carefully in evaluating his life, which I certainly um, am not capable of doing. I, um, He, he did uh, ask clemency of the British um, again and again and again. <clears throat> he did receive clemency from the British. And I think that the process in which that occurred is deeply important and <clears throat> uh, it's, I, 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 I spent some time on it uh, trying to understand it. <clears throat> and I read Savarkar about it and I read his, his biographer about it. And um, I think Savarkar has difficulties in saying what he experienced. So do we all and I, I think that, that that is probably the most critical period in his life, the, the year, the first year, and the torture he experienced in the Andaman Islands. And I wouldn't want to say what I would do coming out of that, or what anyone else would want to do. It's like being in a war. Um, it was a war. And the British were very, very good, uh, good, um, effective. And they were very effective with regard to Savarkar. I don't think Savarkar, Savarkar in, the, in terms of this little bits of, bit of presentation is only a part of a much larger story. And in a sense, what Gandhi is saying um, about all these these different assassinations. There are a number of assassinations in here because Savarkar was involved in them. In each one, Gandhi says the real, um, the real question is where, where is this coming from? Where is the idea? Uh, the Savarkar's instrument of assassination in London, um, Dingra, a young student, Gandhi says he was innocent while well, he, he fired the weapon. But he ha it was like he, he had wine. He had bang, uh, he, bang, he, this is what Gandhi said. It's, it's the idea that was in his head. Where did he get that idea? And, and Gandhi does not like Western civilization. That's a big idea 
and it's involved in all of this. And the and uh, as Ashish Nandi will will talk about some of, of that, I'm sure on Friday, and the state, even that the idea of a security state, and all of that, the transition that India was going through, all of these things are involved in Gandhi's assassination, all of them. Um, we still have um, about three or four, uh, four. Um, um, I will I mean, try we, to be we will not quicker, be able to take any the, more questions. You and ask very hard questions. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm trying to, to paraphrase them. Uh, as uh, We could talk afterwards. Yeah. Um, I, I'm uh, glad to talk. Yeah. Um, 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 there is this, um, uh, and there's this large sentiment that is shared um, um, all around in our public discourse. What is a large sentiment which is shared in our public discourse yeah. that Gandhi's assassination uh, was instanced by or provoked by Gandhi's insistence that <coughs> the monies that were due to the, to the new state of Pakistan by India uh, amounting to some 50, 54 crores should be paid up. And this was seen as certain kind of a betrayal uh, of Ga by Gandhi of the new and nascent Indian state. And that's why the assassination happened. And, and the underlying tone clearly there is, that's perfectly legitimate to do so. Well, that's uh, indeed what uh, some of what uh, uh, was said by uh, Nathuram Godse and people involved in the assassination and has been said quite often since then. It's hard to read it that way if one goes into the history of the depth to which the involvement of various parties in trying to kill Gandhi um, and the period of time involved in the case of Savarkar goes back to 1909. I think uh, that particular issue is uh, a red herring, if we mm. say, in the United mm -hmm. States. It's, uh, you, you, you confuse matters. Um, Gandhi, of course, was, was fasting <coughs> in a week or two before he was uh, assassinated, mm. and they, were, they tried to kill him mm. twice. This is very, very key. We mm. haven't. Uh, perhaps you, you, you probably. Went, perhaps you said something about this. She did. She did. She did. Yes, yeah, be, but between the twentieth and the thirtieth, all of these, the chronology is very, very important, and the uh, the question of being just with regard to Pakistan and the issue of Kashmir. Um, and they're using the money perhaps in the, um, in the war. All of this is, I think, these are important questions, but I think they get thrown into it as if this has something to do with um, the people who have decided to kill him at such and such, and such a point actually long before any of that came up. Yep. So I think it's a red, a red herring yep. um, kind of yep. thing. Yeah. Thank you. Um, th then there is this question about the nature of the experiment itself. Yes. Um, and if you, br I'm, I'm, it's a long question, I'm just paraphrasing it. It's a broad experiment about collective nonviolence. Yes. Um, and clearly, for the questioner, the experiment of collective nonviolence failed both in Gandhi's lifetime yes. and, and certainly thereafter. So would you say that it's, it's an experiment which either failed or it's an experiment in futility. Depends on us. Yep. I, it, it, you, you, we, it's sort of, I mean, each of us, if we're doing experiments with truth, we have to decide where it begins and where it ends, but it's, it's always continuous too. Yeah. <laughs> um, <coughs> Uh, Jacques Maritain, a philosopher I respect very much, he said, the means is the end in the process 
of becoming. Mm, 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 mm. The means is the end in the process of becoming. And um, um, wherever you decide, <laughs> I think the important thing is the, the, um, the Gita renunciation of the fruits and uh, Gandhi, so much to say about that kind of a question. Mm -hmm. um, right. talk ab we can yeah. talk about it later. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, a question uh, to which you partially answered on Savarkar, uh, on, your, uh, on your assessment of Savarkar. Um, um, excuse me. Yeah. Um, one, one thing, um, I tried not to say the things I said yesterday because I knew some of the people here were there yesterday and I can't say it all in one place, so yeah. I thought maybe yeah. I'll say different things today. Mm. But some of the things that are being asked in questions, uh, we talked quite a little about a lot about Savarkar and, and Gandhiji yesterday yeah. too. But I think just to start saying that we're talking about Gandhiji and Savarkar, well, that's a lot. So we can go mm. on and on. Mm. Yeah, go ahead, please, mm. please. Again, on, 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 on you know, um, a question about um, what do we make of it? Really, it's the meaning question. Uh -huh. um, you know, what do we make of Gandhi's assassination today? Does it have any bearing on what we do? Uh, not just the political choices that we make, but largely the moral choices that we make or don't make. I would say it has... Um Everything we have that we, uh, it has to do with everything that we do today. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think it, it, it is Gandhi's assassination, um, looking into it and dealing with it, uh, seems to be the unspeakable because <laughs> I, I, there are lots of books on Gandhi, <laughs> um, big books. And um, the, the, the amount of space devoted to these questions are very, is very, very small. And some of them are very recent books. And I know that there's a lot of information out there and big, big books. Um, I think of the analogy to Jesus. Uh, you raised Jesus at the beginning. Um, um, so uh, if we have a gospel uh, or a story about Jesus and um, it's all about the, the greatness of what Jesus did here, what greatness, you know, all these things that Jesus did. Um, hardly anything about how he died. Mm. Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's, not a, that's not the whole story. Mm. And in the case of Jesus, it's not even the beginning of the story. the story. Nor in the case of Gandhi is it even the beginning of the story if you don't pay any attention to his death. Yeah. What are we doing? in talking about Gandhi, and we have huge books about him, and there's nothing, or a great a movie about him by a great movie maker, where, where's the part about his death? Yeah, there's a little picture about somebody in the background there who may be behind the person. That's not the story. And this information, it did not just appear. No, it's been, it's in been the around public. a long, long time. Uh, it's the same as in my country, the United States. Where is, where is the, the, the basic story about these people, Martin Luther King? You've got a big uh, uh, a statue of Sardar Patel. We have a big statue of Martin Luther King. Not so big. Uh, no way, man. No, not, not, like, <laughs> not like yours. <laughs> not like yours. But we have a holiday. <laughs> Ah, ah, so do we. We have a holiday. We have a holiday, January 15th. Hmm. How many people get holidays in the history of the United States hmm. who are, hmm. he's not even a president, Martin hmm. Luther King, he got a holiday. Hmm. Well, I think it's more important to know that the government that declared the holiday killed him. That's not said on the holiday. 
last question, um, which is a philosophical nature uh, or theoretical nature. But both, both um, in the in the in the Western history of philosophy or Western uh, philosophical spectrum, where would you place Gandhi, or how would you place Gandhi, or would you need to place Gandhi? Since I know very, very little about that spectrum, hmm. I can only say what I know about Gandhi um, in relation to, um, you know, a little bit of knowing a little bit about the spectrum. Hmm. I think he, he strikes me as being very, very um, unique in the sense that um, he puts things together in ways I read a few of those people. I, I don't find anybody who puts things together the way Gandhiji does. Mm. Nobody mm. else. Um, so, number one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you insist. But <laughs> I don't know very many of the yeah, others. Yeah. No, no, no. I, <laughs> so I, I, I have I to say it's, that. It's, it's, it's fair, it's fair. Um, um, right, um, so we've, we've come to the um, end of our questions, we're in time. Um, so thank you very much. Um, do join us for tea outside and thank you James and thank you. Thank, thank uh, you. Um, Sonal's um, translation of the book is available outside. Uh, it's my great pleasure to say please go and buy it. Both of them will sign it. Uh, it's rare that you have the translator and the author both signing a book. Um, so please buy all the copies and, and, and join them for tea. Thank you. And I think I would be glad to talk with people who raised questions that I didn't answer or what did you mean by that? I mean, that's, I don't know a lot of times what I mean by that. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Thank you.